everybody. Thank you for joining me once again, where people continue without let or hindrance, don't they, to be wrong on the interwebs. And not only is this gentleman wrong about what he has to say in his little film here, he's also a dangerous lunatic who, frankly, well, look, anyone that takes this person seriously in any way, well, that's Darwin in action. Uh, absolutely, if you feel like this is a good bloke to follow, you go ahead and do that. It's your funeral. In the meantime, what we'll do is we'll put him right where he's wrong. And spoiler, guess what? Well, you'll see. Um, Morse is this bloke's name. Morse. Um, and his little film is entitled, Is Fructose Bad For You? Question mark. Here's the truth that not all sugars are equal. Correct. Not all sugars are equal. For example, fructose is seven to ten times more glycating and damaging to the tissues of your body in excess than glucose is, for example. So no, you're right. All sugars are not equal. Uh, is fructose bad for you, though? Let's, let's see what Morse has to say about this. Hello, my dear ones. Dr. Morse here. It's always fun to come and talk to you and... Uh... Sure. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's also fun. It's also fun if you can actually understand what is being said, because the person speaking has enough mental clarity to actually uh, form the shapes with his mouth to make his words clear so that he can be heard, rather than slurring like you might expect a demented alcoholic to, for example. Your information, and I want to thank Tony for this article, and this is out of Yale News. Look at that. Uh, fructose is generated in the human brain. So hot. Shall we wait? Okay. Fructose is generated in the human brain in a small amount. So? And so let me read that. The, the caption says, fructose a form of sugar linked to obesity and diabetes. Yes, I wonder why that is. Well, no, I don't wonder why that is. I know exactly why that is. Clearly you don't, and you claim to be a doctor of some kind. Not a medical doctor, by the way. This bloke's a naturopath. Nothing wrong with naturopaths, uh, so long as they say the correct thing. This bloke doesn't. He says fructose is good for you. He promotes a plant-based agenda based on no science of any kind whatsoever. It's ideology, propaganda, smoke and mirrors, spin doctory and fear mongery. It's um, misanthropic in the highest order. It's dangerous. It's, it's, it's lunatic behavior. And as I said, anyone that listens to this bloke and takes him seriously deserves everything they get, as far as I'm concerned. Let's carry on, though. You know, only stupid, unconscious people link uh, simple sugar to diabetes and things like that. Now, right, well, there you go. That's all you need to know about this bloke, isn't it? Right there. I think we're done. Well, we'll watch the rest of it because I've started now, but there you go. What else do you want? What is diabetes? Well, it's elevated blood sugar, simple sugar. What's the easiest way to elevate your blood sugar and keep it elevated? Oh, that's right. Put things in your body that either are simple sugar or break down very quickly or even slowly into simple sugar. I think we're done. We know everything we need to know about this absolute imbecile, this dangerous lunatic, this complete charlatan already. We are less than a minute into his video, and we are done with you, Morse. You have no credibility of any kind. You are a ridiculous joke, and you need to get yourself off YouTube permanently. You have no business here. None at all. What's next? Not understanding the adrenal glands, not understanding what's causing the adrenal gland cortisol problem. Yes, we understand all of that. It's called physiology, something I'm actually trained in, very highly trained in, and published as a researcher in my own right in the field. Okay? And at the end of the day, it all boils down to diabetes is elevated blood sugar, nothing else. The easiest way to promote diabetes is to pour things that are sugar or become sugar down your stupid neck every day of your life. That's how you do it. Should we carry on? Problems, uh, understanding the different levels of sugar. Yes, the different levels of sugar. 
You know, they, they link uh, fructose to high fructose corn syrup, a processed... Sure, high fructose corn syrup, a highly concentrated form of fructose, is likely to be more problematic than fructose from fruit, purely because of the volume of it that you'll be taking in. We understand this. There's, there's nothing, nothing new in that. Nonetheless, if you take in an excess of fructose from, for example, fruit, then you will pay the metabolic consequences of that. It's very straightforward. Uh, sugar. Uh, they, for some reason, the brain doesn't compute. Yes, I, th I think it's very, very clear whose brain it is that's failing to compute. Already. Still less than a minute in. Very, very clear whose brain is not functioning here. You know, awareness is a key factor here. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I love my job. I really do. I don't enjoy making these films, by the way, these Who's Wrong on the Interwebs films quite so much. Um, I make them because they get good viewership. They get good clicks. They, get, they help me with my visibility on YouTube, etc. They're good for the algorithm. I wish I could just concentrate on talking about other things, but the stream of these absolute imbeciles who uh, have no business talking publicly to people about any aspect of nutritional health who come online and make these ridiculous videos wherein they say the most inane and incredibly stupid stuff how can i not make these videos if you don't like them sorry about that i don't really enjoy making them either but perhaps you could support my other videos better than you do people and then who knows, maybe I could stop making this kind of video. In the meantime, carry on. But it says, uh, is converted in the human brain from glucose, according to new Yale study. Yes, so what though, still? Sit there and smile like you're the cat that got the cream or something. All you've said is there's a study that shows that in the human brain, a small amount of glucose is turned into a small amount of fructose. Well, so what? What is your point? Now, what's cool about this? Go on. And I just did a video for the uh, student. Stay on topic. Seriously, you're going to tell us what's cool about this. We're not interested in the video you did. Tell us what's cool. It's on the different sugars and also the different proteins. So it's going to be added to the different proteins. Uh -huh. Level one, so you students can get on there and listen to that one if you want. But to kind of kind of simplify that sort of thing. Simple sugars are essential to the human body, and I again go back. Well, yes, but the human body makes all the simple sugar it requires itself from non-sugar precursors. So again, what is your point? To mother's milk. What has mother's milk got to do with simple sugar other than it contains some? And how does that relate in any way, shape, or form to an adult human being, someone who is, well, anyone past weaning age, frankly? Did you notice that there's a natural design whereby you stop drinking mother's milk at a certain point, you're weaned off, and you get onto solid food? There's a reason for that. Okay? Yes, yes. Basically, and we don't know what a raw food mother's milk would be chemically compounded. What does that mean? They're just words. Goodness me, by the way. <sighs> wow. Wow. We just don't have that sort of research out there. But if you research enough... Are you telling me that you think there's not research to tell us what is contained in mother's milk? Are you stoned? <sighs> and there's a lot of differences of opinion, always, always, always. But for, for basically, you could say the highest component of mother's milk is carbon. Okay, fine. In terms of the... Atomic makeup, uh, the the elemental constituents of mother's milk. In actual fact, you know, water. So, you know, hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, so probably not carbon at all. In fact, but okay, fine. There's some carbon in mother's milk. What's your point? All right. So uh, you've got a form, and that form. 
has to have energy. So let's say you have a car. Yes. Now, your car can't run without what? Carbon. Sure, if it's a petrol car. We don't run on petrol, though. Did you notice? We run on fats, protein, mostly fats, if we're sensible with our diet, and a small amount of carbohydrate, which, again, if you're sensible with your diet, your body has manufactured itself to the exact concentration required. You got to have carbon. Sure. There's no carbon in fat, is there not? Fat is not based on a carbon skeleton exactly the same way that carbohydrate is. Do you even understand basic chemistry, let alone more complex levels of abstraction like the functioning of the, of the human physiological system? Seems not. This is incredible, isn't it? By which I mean lacking entirely in credibility. What an absolute joke this individual is. How dare you come online and make videos purporting to have any kind of knowledge? How dare you? Anyone that follows you, literally, you deserve what you get. That's Darwin. Of course, they're going to make electrical vehicles and stuff like that, but the bottom line is they're using carbon to get electricity. Oh, so what? However you look at it in the universe, carbon is essential to power. No, it isn't. False. To energy. No, false again. Very important to understand that. Very important to understand that what you've just said twice is false still. So these are carbon chain constituents or what we call carbohydrates. R right, and, and fats are not based on a carbon skeleton, are they not? I think you'll find they are. Are we done with that? Let's say you're correct and you absolutely must have carbon physiologically as a human being to survive, and you're correct. You do. Can you get that from fat? Yes. So there's another reason why carbohydrates are not essential in the diet. Also, you know, add to the fact that human beings generate all the glucose, fructose, and anything else they might need sugar wise themselves. Gluconeogenesis, look it up. You'll find it in any physiological biochemistry textbook whatsoever. We've known about this for a very, very long time. Carbohydrates are your fruits, your berries, your melons, and your vegetables. And they're all unnecessary in the diet. In fact, contraindicated. They're all problematic. They're all things that will interfere with the functioning of the human physiological system, ideal health, all of that, because that's not what we're designed to eat. We are not evolved to eat plants and plant material. We are evolved on meat and animal fat. Simple. Now, your vegetable kingdom is predominantly glucose with some yes. fructose chains. Yes, glucose and fructose, yes. And fruits are predominantly fructose with some glucose chains. Right, good. Depending on the fruit, type of fruit, and that sort of thing. Sure. But predominantly, fruits are fructose. Right. You said that already. So let's equate this to your cases. So you got an MS case, you got a Lou Gehrig's case, and I give this one case as an example because it just, it's right, it was in my face. And this mm -hmm. is probably 25 years ago, maybe mm -hmm. 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. This 43 uh, year old female was brought to me by ambulance. Right. Well, you're a naturopath. Ambulances don't deliver people to naturopaths. Okay. Are you deluded? If an ambulance picks you up, they will take you to a hospital, to an allopathic physician. They won't take you to a naturopath. Goodness sake. Advanced MS case, prone stiff on the gurney, couldn't hardly look, turned her head to say, hi, Robert. Stiff as a board. Skinny, real skinny. I put her just on fruit. Well, that's irresponsible, contraindicated, dangerous, inane misanthropic, and it's malpractice. Now, I don't know how many brain lesions she had. I can't remember that much. Two and a half months. I'm surprised you can remember anything at all about anything. Seems you can't. <laughs> like, what is the atomic makeup of fat? What is the structure of a fat molecule? You don't seem to remember that either. Or the fact that gluconeogenesis is a thing and exists and does what it's supposed to do and has done for 
millions of years. Or how to speak comprehensibly, for example. But on just fruit. If she's skinny as a bean, why wouldn't you put her just on fruit? Right? Because you're a dangerous lunatic who needs to be struck off any register of professionals who are accredited to practice any form of medicine whatsoever. And frankly, you need to be sent to prison for reckless endangerment. That's why. Where's the muscle? So just on fruit, two and a half months, she starts getting able to move around. She starts well, I wonder what happened. You probably alleviated the Randall cycle issue, which reduced her chronic systemic inflammation, which reduced her symptomology in the short term. What happens if you eat a nothing but fruit diet long term? Robert. What happens then? Well, you're an example of it, son, aren't you? <laughs> What's next? Starts wheeling herself, and she can feed herself. First time in years and years and years. And I'm going, cool. Oh. <laughs> cool. <gasps> you idiot. I'm excited, right? No, you're an idiot. You're a dangerous, moronic idiot. But I'm looking at her. Remember, I'm a farm boy, and we had horses. And my sister trained him for barrel racing. And so we were into alfalfa, right? And I'm an old alfalfa for green drinks. Uh, I never was into, and I knew Ann Wigmore personally. So? But I never considered wheatgrass superior to alfalfa, and neither did Shackley. Shackley. So? He was a big uh, produ uh, pusher of uh, alfalfa big time. I think at one time, didn't he have something like 30 uh, alfalfa pills a day or something? I can't remember. Oh, that's dangerous and stupid in the extreme. Man, Shackley. <laughs> but... Uh, Alfalfa. So I put her on green drinks, and I can't remember if I gave her a salad or not. I think I did a day. Guess what happened to her? Again, I've talked about this case many times. She lost her ability to move. I got a phone call, and she can't move anymore. Oh, I wonder why. It's incredible. <sighs> you idiot. You absolute moron. I'm going, what? It's raw, full of energy. Why, why can't you move? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys and girls. Uh, do I mention I love my job? Wow. <sighs> <sighs> Carry on. You're doing a great job. And, of course, as these cases dawn on me and teach me, it just pushes me more toward the fruitarian thinking. Oh, right. You absolute moron. <laughs> oh, my word. My word. I'm sorry, there's no other word for it. I can't describe it any other way. And so I put her back on all fruit, and then she started to, started to get that movement back again. Gosh, I wonder if that had anything to do with the anti-nutrients and toxins that you find much more so in vegetables than you will find in fruit. Maybe. Did you think of that? Now, this comes out and says the brain takes a simple sugar, glucose, and converts it to fructose. Another simple sugar. But so? Still? When you go into physiology, you... Uh, yes, let's do that, because you haven't done so far, have you? For a start, to get into physiology, you'd have to understand what a molecule of fat looks like. Okay, and the fact that gluconeogenesis exists and is a thing. And you'd have to understand the Randall cycle and the metabolic pathways in depth. Uh, it would also probably help if you want to discuss something like this, that, that you were basically remotely comprehensible in your speech, for example. You know that there's ribose for your RNA and your DNA. Yep. There's always a sugar needed for electrical activity in the body. No. Absolutely false. Completely false. Incorrect. Because it's electrical. No, it isn't. False again. It's energetic. Yes. You got a car. If you don't put carbon or gasoline in it, it's just going to sit there. You've said that already. 
I know I repeat myself also in my videos, but I'm repeating the correction to the same errors made again. I'm not the one sitting here making the same errors over and over again and repeating myself inanely, incomprehensibly just about, and making a fool of myself, saying demonstrably false, ridiculous, nonsensical garbage to people. Okay? You need energy to... Yes, 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 we need energy. Well, energy is a construct. What we need is fuel in a physical form, mass, that we interact chemically in our bodies in such a way as to encapsulate some of the Gibbs free in order to provide the motive force to do metabolic work. Okay, we need mass to achieve that. Mass in the form of fat in our diet. A very small amount of protein is sometimes used for that purpose, and also sugars can be used for that purpose, but that doesn't say that you should eat any ever or carbohydrates that turn into sugars because your body makes all the sugar it needs by itself still. Goodness me, not even halfway through. What fun. You move things, right? And carbon is the main source of energy, which is translated into carbohydrates. No, carbohydrates or fats, one of which is indicated in the human diet and one of which is not. Okay, still. When you complex sugars getting into the disaccharides or the polysaccharides, you're into starch. Yes. So? And yes, you can claim that starch is hard for the body to break down. And yes, that could... Some starches are impossible for the body to break down. That's how they're designed. Precisely for that purpose. The plants that made those starches, most kinds of starch that you'll get in your diet, put them together precisely that way because that plant doesn't want you to get the nutrient out of it by eating it. It wants to discourage you from eating it. It also puts a bunch of toxins in its tissues as well to try and kill any animal or at least make any animal very, very ill that tries to eat it. For example, perhaps you should look that up. Contribute to someone that has adrenal gland cortisol problems, of course you're going to see higher blood sugars. The adrenal glands can't hardly deal with simple sugars, let alone complex sugars. That makes no sense whatsoever. At all. Especially a polysaccharide, sucrose. Then you have maltose and dextrose of the grains. But it can't deal with starch well. Of course, potatoes, carrots are fairly starchy, you know, sweeter. Uh, you get, uh, so you see the complexity of, of things. The body doesn't do well with complex chemistry. Nonsense. The body is complex chemistry, you buffoon. Wow. This bloke is literally sitting there arguing that human beings ought to pile sugar down their necks. <laughs> wow. That's why there's digestion. And simplistic chemistry is vital to the human body. It's like simple sugars are essential. And to claim that's just noise. That's just words that you've said because you feel like it. There is no science underpinning anything you've just said whatsoever. Rubbish. Simple sugars are causing diabetes. and this They do, you buffoon. Diabetes is elevated sugar in the blood. Nothing else. That's what it is. That's what the pathology is. That's how it's diagnosed. That is what it is. What is the simplest way to elevate the simple sugars in your blood? Consume them. My word! Wow! <sighs> it shows the extreme ignorance of anyone that would claim that. Yes, extreme ignorance, you say. Extreme ignorance to claim that the thing, that is, the pathology, elevated blood sugar, could possibly be caused by pouring sugar into your blood. Yes. <sighs> I'm just going to wait until you've all stopped laughing for a minute or two before I carry on and regather myself. <laughs> wow. They haven't taken their time and looked at 
the process of the human body. Yes, yes, that's the problem here. People just don't understand like you do. Good. The essential need of different vertebrae. And take a look at the difference between the primate. Vertebrae? Vertebrae is a bone in your spinal column. I guess you mean vertebrates? Animals with skeletons? What about them? It's and any other species out there, vertebrae out there. Primates can build things. They can open their locks. They can do all kinds of things. Now, I've seen other animals do that as well. So what? Horses can let themselves out the gate and into the fields, and horses have a very high level of awareness. And yeah, I've never seen a horse turn down a piece of fruit. I've never seen a horse turn down an apple or, or even a carrot. So what? Offer a horse some meat, see what happens. They'll eat that too, happily. As far as that's concerned. However, the primate and the homo sapien neurologically sit on the top of the field. And how interesting is it when you see our success with... Well, some of us do. Some of us neurologically are the top of our game, on top of the field. Others of us would struggle to raise three digits on an IQ test, frankly. ALS, Lou Gehrig's, MS, Parkinson's, spinal cord injuries, just on fruit. And then you see this from uh, Yale, which says the body converts a simple sugar of glucose, which needs insulin to carry it through a cell wall, and fructose, which does not need insulin. Again, so what? Still, to carry through a cell wall. How interesting is that? N not at all, because you've given us no context and no reason to see that as remotely interesting in any way. So you can deduct as ribose for the RNA factors, then fructose is for the electrical uh, neurons. No, that is not how a neuron conducts a message. No. See, this person clearly does not even understand how excitable tissues, including nerves, muscles, etc., transmit messages. No idea, clearly. Stunning. There would be no other reason to convert glucose to fructose. False. Because that's not the reason. Because that's not involved in the process in any way. Except the neurons are the highest electrical cells in... Uh, no, they are not electrical. No. Still. In the body, you lose your nervous system, you're losing neurons. Well, if you're losing neurons, you will be losing the ability to use your, um, your brain nervous system to do what it's supposed to do. Doing things like, oh, I don't know, keeping on top of facts versus fantasy, um, simple motor tasks like speaking clearly, pronouncing our words clearly, comprehensively, not sitting there literally sucking back saliva that's pouring out the sides of our mouths because we're so demented, that kind of thing. Tell you what, though, poison your body with a whole bunch of fructose and you might find there's an issue. Maybe. Who knows? And the myelin sheath. Yes, that's made of cholesterol. Not fructose. Neurotransmitters. No, they're not. They're insulators. So you, you haven't even got that right. Wow. Oh, well, when you look at that... And start looking at this and putting it all together. It's pretty interesting, and I love. Well, I think it's probably pretty interesting to live in your head. Maybe. I think I'll stay in mine, though. Frankly, of that uh, that Yale yeah, found that and put that out there like that. Highly interesting, but no, fits in what we've been teaching for years. The importance of a fruitarian diet. There are, no, human beings are carnivores. Period. End of discussion. There is no debate to be had. We have 
the anthropological evidence, the unassailable, unequivocal anthropological evidence as to the diet of human beings throughout our existence on this planet. We are carnivores. Done. Finish. No more discussion is required on that. Fruitarians, indeed. Especially for neurological function. False. Well, one of us is a carnivore and one of us is a fruit loop. One of us is able to use his cerebral faculties to think, to communicate, to speak clearly, to, um, to be wildly amusing, at least to my people who get what I'm doing here, to speak the truth, to educate, to um, sensibly assess the evidences and inferences that are out there. The one that eats no fruit at all. And one of us is you, a fruit loop, an absolute imbecile. Wow. You start eating lower forms of food, you get brain fog. <laughs> oh, oh, tell us all about that. Go ahead, we'll wait. Oh, well, that's right, you have been for the last... Eight minutes and 16 seconds in your time on your video. I think we've seen a clear example of very, very severe brain fog. Serious brain fog. Yes. What's next? You, you, you just can't think properly. Indeed. Things like that. Yes. And so, uh, real important to take a look at that and not get confused with some... Yes, don't get confused by listening to absolute imbeciles charlatans, propagandists, theologues, and idiots like this person here. Or you can if you like. It's your funeral. Do you think he's more credible than I am? You fill your boots. There's no skin off my nose. Um, that's, that's the way it is. I can't do anything about that. Some of these idiots that claim... Yes, idiots, says this guy. Mm. Tell us all about idiocy. Claim that sugars are going to cause you diabetes. Yeah, you've said that several times, and it still does cause diabetes. Anytime you have an overplus of sugar being taken in from exogenous sources and that sugar pouring into your bloodstream, so that the concentration of sugar builds up in your bloodstream because your cells cannot deal with it you will have elevated blood sugar. When that becomes chronic, you have diabetes. The cause of it is still sugar and things that turn into sugar. Okay? Still. It is. If you got know what causes diabetes, take a look at kidney and adrenal function. Oh, my God. Seriously? Wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Number one. When you suppress kidney function, what are you suppressing? Kidney function. You just said it. You're suppressing the lymphatic system. And it's the lymphatic system that suppresses the function of cells, whether it's adrenal. No, it isn't. Still. No. When you're talking about the metabolic process of using sugar to produce ATP, the thing that interferes with that is a thing called the Randall cycle. It's got nothing to do with the lymphatic system whatsoever. Still. You know, cells, thyroid cells, pancreatic cells, liver cells. Yeah, just name every sort of cell in the body without any context or correctness of statement in any way. What else? Lung cells, they don't matter. Brain cells, it's the lymphatic system that becomes stagnant. Oh, my God. No. And, and deals with the acid side of chemistry. Oh, my God. Now you're going to talk about acid, are you? Another thing you clearly don't understand. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Go on, then. So you, you can't, uh, you have to understand how that is. I, I do very well. I've studied it for a quarter of a century. I've published many, many articles on this as first investigator, first author, as, a, as an actual person of scientific training and, and a person competent to produce scientific works. I understand this very, very well, and I can say from that standpoint, you do not. Not remotely. You have no idea whatsoever 
what you were talking about at all. None. And how when you suppress adrenal production of, of steroids, you're going to see blood sugar problems, metabolism problems, and that also... Yes, metabolism problems. Tell us all about those. Go ahead. Shall we wait? I think not. Oh, bring spans the mineral kingdom. The mineral kingdom now. Good. Tell us about the king of minerals. To press thyroid, parathyroid function, you're going to see cal calcium problems. Yes, but what does that have to do with eating contraindicated carbohydrates and damaging your metabolic system in so doing, while also probably taking in a bunch of toxins, anti-nutrients and such that will further destroy your function as an organism because you are evolved absolutely as a carnivore. Hmm. Because blood does not suppress. It might carry toxic chemistry to your cells and maybe injure cells that way. No. Yes. And where do those toxins come from? Question. But for the most part, blood is always flowing. Without that, for no cells, right? I don't, can't get blood or energy to a cell. A cell is going to like... So this is just waffle, isn't it? This is just noise. Did you have a plan before you started recording your video? Other than to tell us fructose is great, fruit is great, starch is bad, even though that breaks down to what again, by the way? Oh, yes. Simple sugar. Um, and a bunch of other words that you've learned at some point and have thrown into this video completely inappropriately out of context and without any understanding of any science or anything remotely akin to science. Fantastic. Carry on. You're doing a great job. A dead automobile just sitting there. Oh, back to the car again. Good. And these energy components in the body does yes, not. Yes, yes, you've said that too. Not burn protein for energy. Not unless it's an emergency and there's no fat or carbohydrate left on the body to speak of. It can do if it has to, but it prefers not to, obviously. That's why in mother's milk, the protein is way down there. See, mother's milk is this. What, is, what has mother's milk got to do with adult human nutrition other than nothing whatever? Still. Hey, roughly 7.5% Carbohydrate. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason why an infant should take in that amount of carbohydrate. There's also a reason why an individual who is weaned from mother's milk and is now on solids should not do that. Clearly, a reason that you have somehow hitherto been unable to grasp. Doesn't surprise me, given that you are unable to grasp, well, basic first principles, frankly or carbon, to half carbon. That of lipid, right? And then lipids are about 3% or 3.5% of mother's milk. So? And then protein or amino acids are down where? Below 1%. So? 0.8. Wait a minute, this is, this is, these children are growing. They need amino acids for muscles and for tissue and all that. And there's enough in mother's milk in the period of time prior to being weaned. It's evolved over hundreds of thousands, in fact, millions of years, actually. Millions of years. It's designed by nature to be optimized, absolutely. If that was the case, then mother's milk should be predominantly protein. Or oh, my God. Is it possible? that this bloke is even serious? Or is this guy taking the piss? I, I think he's serious. I think he really thinks he knows something. Anything. About anything at all. Credible. Or amino acids. And that's not what you see. So again, this life is, this carbon is essential to the electricity. Yeah, you've said that. And, okay, fine, we need a source of carbon skeletons that we can react chemically in our system in order to produce ATP. What's fat again? Oh, yeah. To the movement, to the feeding of energy of the body. Yeah. There's no energy in fat, is there not? If you think of it, the energy 
way of thinking about it. The byproducts of, the, of this, of course, is acidic. The by Nonsense. Rubbish. False. The pH of fluids in the human body is homeostatically controlled very, very tightly. Some fluids more variable than others by design, such that the pH is always in the physiologically appropriate range at all times throughout the life of a human being. You clearly don't understand this at all. At all. This is not something you should be talking publicly about. Products of fruit, berries, melons, and vegetables are all acids too. Look at the cribs. No, they're not. False. Cycle. It don't matter. All byproducts of metabolism activity are going to be acid. Nonsense. That is false. Demonstrably false, absolutely false, unequivocally false. You, you can't have the blood deal with both sides of chemistry. That's idiocy. No, what's idiocy is what you're saying here. It makes no sense. It is not based on physics or science or common sense or knowledge in this field of any kind. This is your imbecilic, ignorant ideology. This is the stupidest thing I've heard in many, many months. You are the worst promulgator of garbage and misinformation that I have come across in a long time. This is absolutely stunning how bad this video is. What's next? And for the medical community to buy into that the blood dumps it, the body dumps its acids back into the venous system is like, oh my God. The body doesn't do any such thing at all. No. False. You have a whole system in front of your face that's bigger than the blood in front of your face. Now everybody having cholesterol problems and it's a Oh my God. It just gets worse and worse. Every single sentence, doesn't it, kids? Tell us all about cholesterol. Go on. Cholesterol-based system, all that's in front of your face, and yet you can't see it. Interesting. Interesting. You need somebody to point it out to you. Yeah, not you, though, son. Anyone that listens to you deserves what they get. And we've been trying to point it out to them for how many years? I've been trying to point it out for 50 years. And just now... What are you trying to point out, though? We've, we've seen one of your videos here for the last 11 minutes and 24 seconds in the time that it took you to say what you've said. And what have we seen? What have you pointed out to us in any way? Other than you're a lunatic, you're a charlatan, you're a dangerous criminal crackpot, you're guilty of malpractice in any reasonable estimation of what is and what is not competent practice as a physician of any kind. And you've dribbled inanely. Wow. You know, people are getting at it. Of course, I don't know if Yale will ever get what, what their study is and why. The fact that they found that out is beautiful. Some of this research just super proves what we talk about. Uh, well, there you go. See, uh, research super proves. You've just super proved that you know nothing about research. Right there in that sentence, super proved. <sighs> Can it possibly get any worse? He has just a few seconds left. I wonder. And I love that. Some research is a waste of time and money. All of it. But uh, excellent stuff anyway. And I wanted to talk to you about that a little bit. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. My word, kids. Oh, it's been my pleasure. What can I say in summary to that? What can I possibly say? I think I've said it all. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, enjoy the music on the way out the door. Join me next time when someone else will be wrong on the interwebs because it doesn't look like slowing down anytime soon. The Dunning-Kruger is strong with this one.
Incredible. By which I mean lacking in credibility. Right. Get out. See you later. Ciao for now.